This is our now third groom quest, which is fantastic. And the entries just keep getting higher and higher each time. I only got into creative about two years ago. Um, it's yeah, it's living art basically. We're, we're, we're being artists on dogs and cats and goats and all sorts of animals. How do you think you'll go in the competition? Oh, it's anyone's guess. I don't care. I come for fun. I mean, how much effort did you have to put in to get all of these animals ready? I mean, that's a lot of animals that you had in this competition. It's many late nights. Um, it, since Wednesday night, the, you know, it's 1.30 in the morning, um, get to bed and a 4 o'clock rise to, to prep dogs, get them ready and, and come in. So, yeah. But yeah, well, there's a lot of time consumed in grooming, but, you know, I find it very therapeutic at times. Glass of wine, dog, hair stripping knife, beautiful. No better way to spend a night. <laughs> I might try that. It's day one of official competition at Purina Groom Quest 2013. The number of entries from all over Australia and from overseas is up, especially in newer groomers, better known as levels one and two. We have at least a 15% increase in our beginner groomers. And as you know, we provide a... Um, a prize for the level one and two to go to Vegas. So we're very big on encouraging those groomers. We want the level one and two to get to that level three. The trip to Vegas isn't the only incentive for groomers this year, with the addition of several brand new competition categories, starting with the addition of not just one, but two creative competitions. Yes, we had um, the creative contest on Wednesday night, and it was on par with what would happen in Paris or London or New York, which was fabulous. Not to mention the presence of Australia's best-known vet, Dr Harry Cooper. Chihuahuas of the world, unite! <laughs> Dr Harry and the Better Homes and Gardens TV crew captured all the excitement, so you can expect to see more when that segment eventually goes to air. But we can reveal whose artistry impressed the judges most. Crew Garner and the people. <laughs> The gala opening night continued with an impressive fashion parade. We brought fashion and dogs together. But what about the other creative competition for cats? And then we had a cat creative on Friday night here. Now, it actually was the first cat creative in the world, which, how cool is that? In fact, so cool that the Channel 9 Today show demanded a sneak preview earlier in the week, where, although he didn't know it at the time, host Carl Stefanovic got to play with the winning cat creative. It's right on the back of this cat, too. Look, that's um, like a spider and stuff. It's actually the first um, cat creative contest in the world. Yeah. While the first grooming contest got underway, we tracked down the winner of the cat creative, Taryn Binstead, who's been camping at the competition site, which is a long way from her home. I am, I am, yes, 12 hours to be exact. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long drive down from Toowoomba in Queensland. And you had a bit of company? Yes, yeah, my husband and my son came as well and... Um, three dogs and a cat four dogs <laughs> four dogs and a cat this is milo he's a burmese i actually borrowed him off a lady in newcastle so we picked him up on the way down as well as winning the cat creative taryn also picked up second place in the dog creative with another borrowed pet and yet another place with her own poodle in the salon freestyle category overall she admits she's addicted to the art of grooming. I've been grooming 13 years all up now. Um, it has changed a lot. Uh, we, we do a lot more of educating of the public um, on how to care for their animals. Um, we're not just dog washers anymore, you know, we're, we're professionals in our, our work. Um, professionals to... just like the judges who've flown in from all over the world. Well, we chose our judges because we really like to have um, a very astute, astute eye out there. And we want it to be the groomers have every chance. So Tony um, comes from China and 
he works with a manufacturing company and also runs a school. He also exhibits, he's exhibited 13 different types of breeds of dogs. He owns a lot of dogs um, and he's, he's very good at what he does. He's, he's actually trained with Anne Martin in the US who is one of the top poodle people in America. So he really knows his stuff. I really like the poodles in profile here, especially in some certain levels. They're real nice. Like the level one standard is really for as a beginner. That's really amazing. But for the Finnish work, I would say the Asia country probably be much better. Like what we can see, um, there is a, a Japanese girl over here. It's doing real good scissoring work. Um, but uh, it needs to be changing profile. I think profile is very important for breed. And then we have Koko Tanaka, who is from originally from Japan, but a resident of America. And she went to America first off as a ballerina for Disney. And after a few injuries, decided she needed a change of career and loved dogs. So she chose to do that, much to her parents' disgust. <laughs> and she went on and she was to make it onto the American groom team in about six years, which is unheard of. It's very, very hard. It cost them nearly a hundred thousand to campaign for a year to just get up, to try to get onto the team. So it was a great accomplishment from her to do that. Uh, first of all, the profile breed profile is a little bit different for the grooming part. First of all, I love Australian people. I've been having a good time. I already have uh, several friends, new friends. And these days we have a Facebook. So we keep uh, keep eye on each other and just, just being friends. That's really good. Uh, so I have a chance to talk with those groomers, new groomers. Then I realized several part of the confirmation, profile grooming confirmation is a little bit different. So as a judge, I have to understand their way to groom, and I should com I should give a respect for their way to groom compared to United States way. That's the little tricky and fun part. Yeah, I'm learning a lot this time. And GroomQuest fans learned a lot from Coco's seminar, specifically her forte, Japanese-style grooms, ideal for clients with a more mature dog. Basically, what they wanted to do this cut was easy maintain maintenance, and inside their house, uh, no shoes, but the dogs are go in and out with shoe uh, without shoes. So they wanted to make sure the dogs are really easily clean. That's the reason it became like that: tiny, tiny body, short, short, like a shaved down body. And if you shave legs as same as body, then it become like an eggplant with four chopstick. <laughs> We don't want to do that. That's why we have a little flare towards the uh, ground and we will have a little bit bigger head. And because so many people, so many groomers are living in Japan in a tiny island, we have to make something special. So they create more and more different face and hairstyle. That's the Japanese trim. So every single day, it's kind of evolving to different style. And then we have Satik from Thailand, who runs, again, one of the biggest schools in... He runs the biggest school in Thailand and does lots of creative and, and he's a great poodle specialist. Satik's creative genius saw him recreate the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge. Plus, a magnificent Thai peacock-themed extravaganza. Another first for GroomQuest 2013. I'm William McCander and I'm 12 and I'm the youngest groomer of Australia. We had a little 12 year old here today, Will, and he is so excited about becoming a groomer. He's just so driven. He's gonna spend Christmas with me and help me in my salon. And he is just so excited doing dogs. It's like he's, it just lights him up. It's just awesome. And isn't that lovely to see? It is really lovely to see. GroomQuest 2013 also added a very special new perpetual trophy in memory of a very special dog. It's to remember Buddy each year and the sad way that he died at the groomers on the 7th of January this year when he was accidentally hung 
when he was... That rumour was fined over Buddy's death, but professional groomers who were horrified by this entirely avoidable accident wanted a more tangible reminder to promote higher safety standards across grooming salons. And the Buddy Award was born. I'm... I'm just so touched that, that Les and Christine Spearin and Purina have, have organised this award and it's to go to a, a groomer that over the four days of GroomQuest has shown a genuine kindness and connection with their animal. I'm sure the groomer that did that to Buddy wouldn't have any even idea that this is probably on. But the calibre of groomer here is incredible. So it's very hard to isolate one. Um, we sort of went through and, and had a list and um, just came, kept coming back to this one that we just kept repeatedly seeing gestures and interaction with the dog that I wish Buddy had had back in January. The winner is about to be announced. Can you tell us the winner just before the announcement? Danielle Siegel, she's number eight. She's been absolutely beautiful with the three dogs. I've seen a groom over the weekend and, yeah, she's, she's it. That wasn't the only it on display over the weekend. According to all four judges, this year, more than any other, Aussie and international competitors across all levels nailed the most crucial it of all, profile. I do really like the poodles in profile here, especially in some certain levels. They're real nice. Like the level one standard is really, for as a beginner, that's really amazing. Especially I was so impressed about level one people's uh, eager, eager, is that the right word? Um, eager and wanted to learn more. And they are really, they have a good eyes. I was so surprised. Sometimes you could see they can jump to level three level people are competing. They just need to skill up for the sizzling part. But the most, most important part is a pro, pro, pro file and they have it. They really have it. It's really close to correct profile. So I am so excited to see that. The standard has improved incredibly. It has really, really, really improved. We have, I've, I was a bit teary earlier because um, I, after being involved in our industry for so many years and seeing these level ones moving their way up and listening and doing better, I was just like, oh, I said to them like, I'm just, yeah, I was so teary because I am so proud of what they do. No matter whether beginner, intermediate or experienced, all the competitors were out to demonstrate their skills and catch the judges' eyes. I'm a terrier person and I'm a terrier judge, so it's my passion. How long have you been grooming terriers? Uh, about 22 years. OK, so sort of, you know, feeling new. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like an obsession. <laughs> what is it that fascinates uh, you about terriers? Oh, I think it's their spirit. They're undying spirit. They're great characters. They're, they're almost unbreakable. All other pure breed section attracted a wide range of dogs and intense competition. The final day of competition with gun dogs in the morning alongside, well, some very, very interesting salon freestyle. That is a bitch on. As a poodle. It's yeah. a, a bichon as a poodle. As a poodle. <laughs> yes, so I've cut all its face off and feet and tail and it used to look like one of those. <laughs> oh, what a bichon supposed to look yeah. like. So this is the new trend? Yeah, well it's freestyle, so um something fun, you know. You can turn it into whatever you want. And vice versa, with a standard poodle masquerading as the world's biggest bichon. Gun dogs have their own die-hard army of fans, including Emma Malik. Yeah. What's your favourite yeah. breed to groom? I love gun dogs. Uh, spaniels, um, I think, yeah, probably cocker spaniels are my favourite to groom. Gorgeous, gorgeous animals. Yeah. Um, you cope with poodles and bichons if you have to? I, I cope with them. 
<laughs> I can't being the word. I'm, I'm, I enjoy Bichons, poodles I'm still learning because that's the, the ultimate dog to, to groom. Um, so I'll get there eventually, but yeah, cope is the, the key word there. But producing the perfect gun dog style is also a challenge, even when you've been doing it for years. Where are you from? I'm from Brisbane. Excellent, so you've come all the way down? Yes, I've driven down from Brisbane. Oh my goodness, with your dog? With my dog, who's a gun dog, who likes talking. <laughs> He's actually a show dog, and um, I've been showing him for five years. It was Claire's first competition, but it certainly won't be her last after coming second in her very first Level 1 competition. All of the Green Quest competitors put their heart and soul, as well as copious amounts of time, before and during the event, including the groomer with the unofficial crown for most entries for 2013. And tell us all the things you were entered in and what happened. Oh, well, if there's a competition, I'm in every class, so I... I entered the, the poodle and the gun dog, the terrier, and creative. yes, creative. There were two, uh, cat and dog, and um, I wanted to, um, you know, heighten my chances, so I entered two creative dogs, and uh, yeah, we won with, uh, came second with one of those. And um, second with a cat as well. So then we had four grooming dogs to do after that. And guess who won the top poodle class in level three? <laughs> While cracking level three status is the dream, the best of levels one and two have another incentive to put their best scissoring forward the chance to win a trip to Vegas to Super Zoo. <laughs> And the bean counters were hard at work, determining another first for Groom Quest, Australia's very first ever national grooming titles for each level, and the very first acknowledgement of the role that salons play in lifting grooming standards, the very first Salon of the Year awards. Tough choice for the judges, takes time and we'll show you their decision plus all the winners and place getters in just a moment. But first, here's the real winner, the future of grooming in Australia. As you can see, having you know, four, 30, 40 dogs, we've probably got 40, 50 dogs in here with the ones that aren't in the ring and it's as quiet as a mouse. Um, it was great that we had our fashion unleashed at the hotel at the Hills Lodge this year. The the hotel were thrilled to have us there, which is an Accor hotel, which is fabulous because that's going to make um, doors open again for our industry. So, yeah, we're pretty. The box are all, boxes are all getting ticked. Congratulations! See you next year at GroomQuest 2014.